we're going to talk about uh, some possible choices for Manchester United, and we're starting with Antonio Conte. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of gasps and a lot of anger in the comments. Of Antonio Conte. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Antonio, Antonio Conte, Rob. I loved what he did when he came to Chelsea. He, uh, you know, he almost uh, revolutionised the Premier League in terms of coming in and playing three at the back. Not many teams did used to do that before, and he came in. And uh, look, you saw him at this in at Inter, and he won the title there. Let's look at this Inter side. Obviously, he's playing a four, uh, three, three at the back, three five two or three four three. When he came in, Rob uh, to Inter, Spalletti was there. Spalletti played four two three one. So immediately he moved to to the back three, which is more of his staple. And uh, having a look at this team here, look, you can see that midfield trio of Barella, Vidal and Brozovic. Now, the difference between what we saw at uh, Inter and Chelsea is that Chelsea, he, he actually played with a double pivot. So he played Matic and Fabregas, whereas at Inter, he played more with Brozovic as the, as the holding player. And then he played Vidal and Barella sort of more as uh, dynamic box box players. And then you saw the, the partnership at the top with Lukaku and with La Toro Martinez, who were fantastic. I mean, I think they were... Definitely one of the, or if not the best strike partnership in Europe under Antonio Conte. Uh, you know, they were both able to run in behind. They could collect the ball uh, deep. They could play with back to goal. And uh, what you would see is that with Conte is that there's a very large emphasis on those wide players. Hakimi was fantastic. You saw Ashley Young there as well. And uh, we had uh, Perisic on that side as well. And looking at this sort of uh, structure that he had, do you think it would work at Manchester United? I mean, what I'm... Maybe a little bit concerned about with Conte is that when I look at um, his teams without the ball, they're not a high pressing side. They're more of a containing side. And, uh, you know, they do retreat into more of like a mid block. I'd say, you know, they do drop back into like a 5 3 2. So it is a bit more <laughs> defensive. But what, from what we've been seeing with Oligon Solskjaer and Manchester United, I actually want to see a bit of solidity at the back. So, you know, what are your thoughts on Antonio Conte? And what is the talk? Because is he emerging now as the number one target for Manchester United? I think he's the favourite to land the job as it stands. Um, he's a coach that came to the Premier League and won it. He showed, you know, within the two years that he was in England, that he won two trophies, the two major trophies domestically. He showed that he could take a Chelsea team who had good players but were very dysfunctional at that point, find a system relatively early on in his tenure there and go on and be very successful. So, you know, when we look at kind of... The system here that he played at Inter, 3-5-2, I don't think he'd play that at Manchester United. I don't think that's how, how it would be. But he's played 3-4-3 at Chelsea. That was a highly successful system. And it was not a regressive system. So, you know, we talk about Conte maybe being a more defensive coach. Uh, I don't really see that. I think the, that people kind of think that the only attacking system in the world is 4-3-3. And if you play 4-3-3, that's the beautiful game. And uh, Pep plays it and Klopp plays it. There's plenty of coaches who win trophies around Europe and around the world, who play different systems. So 3-4-3 three, three would allow United to, to maybe do more United things, like attack, you know, like move the ball through midfield, like being more of a unit, of having more solidity at the back. You're just saying there about sitting back in that 3-5-2, and the idea there is obviously that the wing-backs come back and allow you to kind of have more of a low block at times. Inter didn't really play with a low block last year. They didn't play with a low block. They went and attacked teams. You know, Ashley Young was up the pitch as much as he'd ever been. You know, so I think when you look at alternatives to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, there are tangible people out there who do not have a job or currently do have a job and would like to manage at Manchester United who could come into the football club and have an immediate uh, impact. Conte is a stone cold winner. Uh, we have to dispel the myth that yeah, Conte. Rob, let's do that now. Can I read out a few comments before we do that? Because there's a lot of chat. Yes. And I had a good chat with uh, David Amayel, who does the, the Couch Land podcast um, the other day. And uh, he was talking about Conte and he was saying Conte hasn't actually left clubs. Because I said, you know, Conte leaves clubs in messes, you know, when he leaves. So I said, left Chelsea in the mess, left Inter in the mess, left you in the mess. And he actually educated me on that. But I'm going to read out a few comments here. Because Charlie's saying, okay, Conte, not for me. He's too moody. Zidane, probably worth a shout for two years, I'd say, but looks risky. Rogers probably deserves an interview. We're going to talk about Rogers in a second. Uh, and there's a comment here from Gary saying, you know, what happens if Conte comes? What happens to Rashford and Sancho and Ahmad? Well, when you actually looked at Conte at Chelsea, he played a front three of Hazard, Costa and Pedro and did that to great effect. So I don't think that would be too much of an issue. And then here's a comment here, Rob, saying, let's be real. The United board won't go for Conte as he's too volatile. and He'll say things as it is. It might expose him. Let's discuss that myth about Antonio Conte being combustible. I love his passion, Rob, 
I think it's it, it would completely, you know, the Old Trafford faithful would absolutely love it. You'll see a little bit of uh, fire and grit on that touchline, which I want to see, to be honest. I uh, was never really a fan of Van Hal sitting there with his iPad, you know, wherever he's doing doing his Amazon orders or whatever. So what what is uh, what are you going to say about the, this myth about Antonio Conte? The, the complete myth is that he leaves football clubs in a mess and that he just kind of walks away and 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 is combustible it's it's just it's it's not it's not just incorrect it's a lie it's a basic lie it's not what it's not what he is not what he does you know he's a very calm character behind the scenes he's a he's a student of the game he's a coach he puts winning teams together He's a methodical man. He knows how to get what he wants out of a team. So that's why he's so good. So even Mourinho at his best, going back over years, Mourinho wasn't a defensive coach. You know, in the in the early years at Chelsea or even at Real Madrid, he wasn't. He became that much later on. And if Conte came to Manchester United tomorrow, he would not be a defensive coach. He would not kind of, you know, again, we said this thing about the Glazers and this myth also has to be dispelled. Uh, boards go for people that make them win. That's what they do. Boards look at winners. Boards don't look at, well, what if we fall out with him? What if something? What if there's a problem in a year or two or three? They want trophy, trophy, trophy in that time. And they're willing to take it. They'll take it on the chin to have a manager that they don't really agree with. They don't want nodding dogs as managers. I hear this all the time about the Glazers. They just want a nodding dog, and that's fine. No. They need a manager that's going to help them win because that makes them the money that they want. That's how it works. So I think with Conte is that in terms of his CV, what he's done in the past, um, it's a very unique thing to have a coach like that who has that English experience as well. You know, like he's done it in other countries, obviously done it in Italy. He's been obviously coach of some very, very big football clubs. He knows how these big operations work. Now, that is important because that's what he'd need to show to the Glazers, that Manchester United doesn't phase him. Of course, Manchester United would not phase Antonio Conte. And I don't also think that the football's the style of football that we would see would be boring or negative. I think it would be exciting. I think it would make United competitive. And, and I think Conte might not be the dream choice for Manchester United fans. Like I think we did a poll earlier on. Uh, I did that on my Twitter account. and we Yeah, you know, Rob. 23% we, wanted Conte. So, so only 23% wanted Conte out of that. And the, the, the obviously, we're going to discuss some of the other candidates as well now. Um, but only 23% want Conte because I think there is a lack of education between United fans about what Antonio Conte is. Their, their image of him is leaving Chelsea, leaving Inter Milan, and being a kind of spiky individual. And the, the truth is, is that those two football clubs were a mess, and that's why he left. It wasn't his fault. And I think that he's not a spiky character at all. I think he's highly passionate, highly intelligent. I think he would bring something different to Manchester United and he knows how to manage stars. Yeah, I mean, something Ashley Young said, actually, which was very interesting. Young did come from Oligon Solskjaer to Antonio Conte and Young said they demand so much. The key is his winning mentality. He demands so much on and off the pitch. He demands those high standards from everyone around him. Manchester United have got a lot of stars now in that squad. They want a manager that's going to demand. I'm not saying Oli doesn't. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But Antonio Conte has gone to several different leagues, won the titles there. He is elite. Um, there's a lot of questions, Rob, you know, sort of regarding, you know, um, well, there's a comment here actually from Vincent. It's something that we had a chat with. And I, you know, I'm a big Pochettino fan as well. Now, um, I, I'm looking over at Pochettino and PSG and I'm, I'm looking with great interest because I think that there's definitely a possibility that he won't have a job by the end of the season. Is there a possibility that the club, because he was a long-term option, that the club do wait and uh, see what happens there before they make a move for, let's say, someone like Conte, who is free and available to take the job? No team ever waits. If results are bad, no team ever waits. It's not how it works. So, you know, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer went in the next five games because it completely collapses in and around him, I don't see Manchester United waiting for anyone. There is a chance that they put an interim in place like they did with Ole. Um, you know, Michael Carrick has a lot of favour behind the scenes. So I think that no. would drive Man uh, No, but that might happen. You know, like you, you, we're talking here about reality, Haydar You'd again. You'd rather keep Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Rob, than, than bring in Carrick, who's got zero experience of managing but, football. But, yeah, I, I, I agree, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm discussing reality. So like, if you're going to put an interim in place, they would probably do it with someone from within the club. So you might not like it. United fans might not like it, but this is a reality. It might happen. And that's if they want Pochettino. But no club waits for a manager to get sacked so you can hire them. It doesn't work like that. There is a chance that Pochettino will not stay at uh, PSG that long, but there's enough 
good managers on the market or or who are gettable within their own football clubs that makes me think that kind of Pochettino is way down on the list. Of course, if the same happened to Pochettino in the next 10 games that say it all collapses at PSG and suddenly, you know, he signed a new contract, but it means nothing and he gets sacked, then it might be a case that the kind of the planets align and that Pochettino comes to Old Trafford. I just don't think that that's the most likely outcome as it stands.